In this movie, we'll begin our exploration of a very powerful feature of Anime Studio Pro, and that is the particle generator. It is a very fun little special effect to play with, and typically people use it right out of the box to do some real basic things like make smoke. There's some simple ways to do it and some very advanced ways to do it, and we'll actually be looking at one of the more advanced ways later on as the movies continue in this series. Let's examine the particle option itself, and we'll start poking around a little bit, and then we'll get into some more advanced applications of it. To insert a particle layer, you simply come to your Layers palette, Insert Particle, and we see that layer pop up, and it's got these little dots on the folder there that let you know there's a bunch of stuff in there. Let's go ahead and double-click this and rename it just for the sake of clarity as Particle. And like any layer that you want to have, uh, or I should say with a particle enclosing folder, just like with bones, it only affects something that's within that folder. So we'll need to drag the layer one into that. But first, let's put a shape on that. And I'll actually name this layer Shape. And we'll just do some real fundamental type of looking at how it works before we get into a little more complex application. Well, there is our circle. Nothing spectacular, and to make it function as part of the particle generator, I simply need to grab the shape layer and drag it into the particle folder. Now that it's in there, it looks like nothing's happened, but that's because nothing has happened on the timeline yet. And it also is because I haven't selected the actual particle layer. If I click on the particle layer right now, we'll see all of a sudden that we get this, this assembly of circles in there. Now something important to realize is that these circles are what is technically called an instantiation. They don't really exist. They are there pretend. The only one that really exists is this single shape. So with a particle layer in your file, you can have very dense particles across your scene, but it doesn't actually make the file significantly larger because that geometry, the actual shapes that you see, aren't there. They're just pretend. So now that we've got a little particle action going on, if we grab our timeline indicator and go ahead and move it down, we'll see that we're getting some motion involved. It looks a little bit kind of like it's bubbling out of the top, and then they go down and they just disappear as they get further down. Going the other direction, it looks like they're going back in. And if I hit the play button, we can kind of see it in action right there. It looks like bubbles coming out of a little fountain or something. Let's stop and go back. I'll double click on the particle layer to go ahead and open its parameters. We'll come over to the particle tab, and we have quite a few options to play with right here. Some of them are very self-explanatory, like particle count, how many you're going to see. The preview particles is actually how many you're going to see in the preview as you work on your file. The particle count is actually how many are going to be rendered. And one of the reasons you have this discrepancy here is that for an actual rendering, when you do the animation itself, this will let you have a higher degree of particles in the final render but for placing the particle generator for animating it through your scene, you don't need to see all those, and you certainly don't need the overhead of having the computer calculate them all as you're doing your basic animation. So the preview particles is completely different than the particle count. Particle count is on render. Preview particles is when you're working with the file. The next thing we've got is what's called an emission area. We essentially have a source width, which is value x x running sideways, just like the graph x sideways, y is going up and down. And the source height is the y value. I kind of wish they would had uh, associated those, those features with it because we've got x, y, and z up here in our position indicator for the layer. The source depth is the z value, how deep the particles are between the camera, you looking at it, and the actual particle emitter itself. This will become important in one of the advanced functions we'll take a look at in a movie that's coming up. The velocity is how fast they go. Now there isn't a particular value associated with this, just know that as the number gets bigger, it gets faster. And then this velocity spread is kind of a variance. If you want our, all the particles to be perfectly timed, coming out the exact same way, then the velocity spread has changed to zero. Right now we've got a variance of 0.5. So let's take a look at this. We'll increase the particle velocity to four. We'll increase 
the, or I should say, let's try it this way. We'll decrease the velocity spread to zero. And now all the particles are going to emit at the exact same speed and go flying off because we've actually doubled their speed. So as I drag the timeline indicator, these things are all flying out really fast. Let's go ahead and look at that particle layer again. Selecting our options now, I'm going to change the velocity spread, the variance, to three. This will give me a variance of significant numbers. Some are going to be going very slow. Some are going to be going very, very fast. Dampening is how quickly they slow down. You might want to think of dampening as something like air friction. As they come out of the emitter, the dampening slows them down over distance. So if you've got, say, a splash of water, where the water comes very quickly from the start, but then slows down and slowly cascades back down. I won't change the dampening at this point in time. We've got some variable things we can put here. The direction right now, 90 degrees is straight up and down. And then we've got acceleration down, or actually whatever direction you want to go. And they each have their own values right here. Currently, we've got this coming out of the top at 90, straight up and down, and a spread of 20 degrees means if you draw a line right down the front of the particle emitter, then we've got 10 degrees on one side, 10 degrees on the other. If I go ahead and increase the spread to something like 60, that will give me 30 degrees on each side of the spread, and they'll have a downward velocity of 4. Let's take a look at what's happening now. When I go ahead and drag the particle emitter, we see these coming out with different speeds. Some are going slow and immediately going down. Some are going very fast and expanding across the screen. In our next movie, we'll start working with some actual particles that come with Anime Studio Pro before we get into our advanced functions.